Hi everyone and welcome. In this video I will review the X-Vive T9 in-ear monitors. Are they any good? Let's find out. First of all, for the sake of transparency, I do not get paid for making this video. However, x did send me these for free in return for me making a review on them. And since I'm very aware of that most musicians are not super rich and need to be careful with what they spend their money on, this is exactly what I want to do, a review and not simply an advertisement. In the end, I want you to be able to make an informed decision on whether getting these is a good idea for you or maybe not. So let's get right into it. In general, in-ear monitors are awesome. They fulfill two very, very important functions. First of all, they are sound isolating. That means they are protecting your ears. I mean, especially for us drummers, this is super important. Playing the drums is very, very loud. And this is even more the case when you're playing on stage or you have a band rehearsal. The levels of volume you get exposed to is just too much for your ears to handle. And in the long run, you will get severe problems with your hearing if you don't wear any sort of ear protection. The second important function is that while having good ear protection, you can also listen to stuff. Like for example, to music that you want to play along to, or to a metronome, or a click track, or maybe your bandmates. And this comes in really handy in many situations. Um, normally when I practice the drums I always listen to a metronome while playing and also I really like to listen to my kick trigger to make sure that my double bass is always on point. These functions can also be fulfilled by something like this here, but usually, although this is cheaper, in-ears are usually a lot better at this, at basically everything, and especially when you move around a lot and move your head, these tend to fall off quite easily. And also, these kind of Mickey Mouse headphones do not look very cool on stage. So, in general, in-ears are the way to go. I have now used in-ears for, I think, almost 10 years, different brands, different models. And also, I have tested the T9s extensively. Um, while practicing here at home, but also I took these to Norway to my rehearsals with Keep of Kalesin and also I played two festival shows with them, Metal Days in Slovenia and Leander Still Rock in Spain. So I think I have a good base of experience, uh, more than enough data to make a confident assessment of the qualities of these in-ear monitors. There are two main things that really stuck out to me with the T9 in-ear monitors. First, sound isolation. With my previous in-ear monitors, I really liked to put these on top over my ears just to reduce the noise enough. But with these, this is not necessary anymore. Um, and also, it's not just the pure reduction of noise. It is also the fact that even if everything gets a lot more quiet, everything still remains very, very clear. So you can still clearly hear the attacks on the toms, on the bass drum, on the snare. So you can still hear very well what you are playing on the drums. And this is just perfect. So in this regard, these are really perfect 10 out of 10. The second big point is that once you put them in place, they really stay in place. And this is really important, especially during shows. It was basically like this, I put them in and then I completely forgot about them. And this way I could just focus on playing the drums and delivering the best show I could. So no matter how much you move around or bang your head or whatever, these absolutely stay in place. I think these two things, like having very good sound isolation and them staying in place, is mainly due to one specific design feature and that is that when you put them in, they go in quite deep into your ear canal uh, certainly deeper than any of the other in-ears I have had yet. So um, this is, I think, the main reason why they are so good at this. Next up, let us see what's in the box. So this is the box the T9 in-ear monitors come with. Now let's see what's inside here, apart from the actual in-ear monitors, of course. So this is where the actual in-ear monitors were stored in, very securely, I might add. Um, also, they were disconnected from the cable, so this here can be disconnected. So in case the cable breaks, you just have to replace the cable and not the whole thing. Um, also, this connection is very, very solid. You need a lot of force to disconnect this, so there's no way this happens accidentally when just someone pulls on the cable or something. 
Actually, uh, while I was playing one of the shows, I accidentally sat on the cable, so uh, my, my head got pulled back a little bit by the in-ears, and the in-ears remained in my ears, and the cables stayed connected, so uh, yeah, I can attest that this is really a secure connection. So, now here we have the guarantee thing. By the way, it is uh, very nice to know that someone is willing to give me a four-year guarantee on these. I think this is a good sign regarding the long-term quality. Then we have two manuals, one in English and one in German, which is very nice, uh, especially for my viewers, uh, die sich nicht so sicher sind in ihrem Englisch. So, next we have this nice, stable and hard box, which is just perfect for transport, especially when you are traveling a lot and going on a, on a plane and stuff like this. It's very important to keep things like these in your monitor secure and this box uh, will definitely do the job. Now in here we have a couple of, couple of items. Um, of course, the usual different sorts of earpieces. I personally prefer the foam pieces um, over the rubber ones, but this is, I think, a matter of personal taste. So uh, definitely you have a lot to choose from with these in your monitors. Now we, of course, also have an adapter. So you can go from the small jack cable to, to the larger version which is of course very important. And last but not least, we have here a very important thing and this, this is a cleaning tool. I mean, everyone who has ever used in your monitors knows that they get dirty quite quickly. And with this, well, it is a lot easier to keep them clean. When we take a look at some of the technical data here, well, I'm not an audio expert, so most of this doesn't tell me that much, but one thing stands out, and that is the frequency range. It goes from 20 Hz to 16.5 kHz, which seems kind of limited to compared to other in-ear monitors I had, which were going up to 70.5 kHz, and the headphones I use for listening to music go up to 20 or 21 kHz. Now the big question is, of course, is this a bad thing? I think here it really depends on what exactly you want from these in-ear monitors. When you just want to listen to music, you generally want to be able to hear everything, from the lowest bass to the very highest, finest details in the higher frequencies, especially when you are listening, for example, to classical music. Um, however, if you want to have a good in-ear monitor, this might be a little bit different, because there you do not necessarily need to listen to everything, but instead you want to focus on hearing the relevant information as clearly as possible, at least in my opinion. And here is the difference. For example, the low end, the bass. When you are listen to, listening to music, especially music with a beat, it is of course cool, cool to hear a mighty bass pumping. But for an in-ear monitor, this would actually be a detriment, because, I mean, as cool as a low end bass is, when you, for example, play double bass a lot or some, something like this, the bass usually makes everything just sound more muddy and more noisy and loud than necessary. Instead, you want to focus more on the attack of the bass drum, so you can hear more clearly if you are playing tight or not, because this is kind of the main purpose of a monitor, right? Same goes for the very high frequencies. I mean, especially in classical music, it's cool to hear all the fine little details up there, uh, with especially like very high violins or something. But in the context of a uh, monitor, the very high frequencies can all can sometimes be very taxing on your ears and kind of just get on your nerves uh, without giving any uh, additional clarity to the overall sound picture. This is especially the case, for example, when you have a kick trigger that has a very sharp attack and also the same goes for a click track or a metronome. When you hear too many high frequencies, it is just like hurting your ear without giving you any additional clarity. Or for example, when you think about distorted guitars, when you hear too much high end, you just hear without really being able to figure out what the guitarist is actually playing. So the low end of these uh, 20 Hertz is actually quite good. But when you're listening to music, you will realize that the whole bass section sounds kind of neutral. I think this is the perfect uh, word for that, neutral. Um, it is certainly not like bass boosted or something like some headphones you might use. It might be limited a little bit in the very high frequency range, like the limit seems to be 16.5 kilohertz, but for me personally this is not a detriment because 
I can still very clearly hear all the attacks that are relevant without anything actually hurting my ears. For example, I can turn up the metronome quite high without it starting to get on my nerves or feeling uncomfortable to my ears. So, if you just want to listen to music, these are maybe not the perfect option. But as in-ear monitors, for me, they are absolutely perfect. Don't get me wrong, they are not bad at just uh, playing music, because I did listen to a lot of music with these, especially when I was on planes or waiting at the airport and stuff like this, and you can still listen to music with these and enjoy listening to music. It's not like they are bad at it. But it is a bit different from using headphones that are there for listening to music. But as I said, for in-ear monitors, I think they are doing the job perfectly. Compared to the in-ear monitors I used previously, despite the limited frequency range, it feels to me like I'm, for example, hearing my kick trigger actually more clearly. But this might also have to do with the excellent sound isolation characteristics. So, after having gone over everything, the final conclusion is that the X5 T9 in-ear monitorings are freaking awesome. I mean, for me personally, they just tick all the boxes. They stay in place really, really well, no matter how much I like to shake my head around. They have a very focused and clear sound, which is just perfect for what I want from my monitoring. Third, this is especially important for us drummers, the sound isolation is excellent. Also very important for anyone who thinks that the drummer in their band is playing too loud, by the way. Fourth, they seem to be very robust. And they also come with everything you need with them, like this little cleaning tool, the adapter and everything. And last but not least, the price is very, very reasonable. So if you want to get in your monitors, I can absolutely recommend these. By the way, the T9s also go together perfectly with the U4 wireless in-ear monitoring system, which is also from x -Vive. And by now I have gotten so used to it that I really cannot live without it anymore, especially in a live situation. If you want to know more about this device, I have a very long extensive review and test, which you can watch here. The link is also down below in the description. By the way, if you want to know more about the technical side of things, equipment or like how to trigger your bass drum, how to program your own click tracks and much, much more, then join the Nechtan Drum School. Just click the link up here or down below in the description. Should the drum school not be open, just subscribe to the newsletter and you will be notified immediately once it opens up again. So I hope this video did its job in enabling you to come to a more informed decision about the T9s. And if you are now interested in these, there's a direct link to them down below in the description and also down below in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.